Hey guys, it's Luke again with yet another episode of Motor Minds, and today we are in a 2017 Toyota Corolla LE. So for 2017, Toyota did a minor facelift of the Corolla, changing the front end and a little bit of the interior, making it look a little more snazzy and a little more aggressive. And today what we're going to do is figure out, does the Corolla compete in an increasingly competitive small car segment? So let's start with the exterior styling. As I just said, for 2017, Toyota facelifted the Corolla, doing a few minor changes on the front end. Basically what they did was they continued with the trend of making massive front grills. Toyota has been like on a roll with these huge front grills. You see them in Toyotas, Lexuses. I mean, they're everywhere now. And they implemented that in the Corolla. You have this huge grill underneath the Toyota emblem and it just looks like an upside down V. It's this matte black finish and it looks really good. And also what they did was they brought out the front bumper a bit. The front bumper goes a bit further forward than it did on the old car and it makes the car look lower and a bit more aggressive, but I'm not sure if they should have extended it as much as they did. It makes it look almost a little bit like a fish, but I think it still looks really good overall. It's an aggressive design, especially compared to previous Corollas, which looked like dishwashers on wheels. This car looks a lot more purposeful and I think it's really attractive overall. Now the sides in the back of the Corolla are exactly the same as previous models, like the 2016 and the 2015. The rear end is actually a carbon copy of those cars. I wish they'd done something with the rear end like they did on the RAV4, maybe give the lights some more style to them, maybe change up the colors a bit, make them a bit more aggressive but they didn't do that. But it's still a good looking car in the rear end. I think overall this whole car looks way sportier than previous generation Corollas ever did. So let's talk about the powertrain. And now I think this is where some people may think Toyota's lagging a little bit is because they still use the same 1.8 liter four cylinder that puts out 132 horsepower. And that's not a whole lot of power, but it's made to do a continuously variable transmission, which is calibrated very, very well. So it uses the most of that 132 brake horsepower. And it actually feels quick. Like it's a sprightly little car. It doesn't feel underpowered at all. It's very surprising just how quickly this car can get up to speed. Now, is it fast? Of course not. It's a compact car, but still, it is pretty, pretty quick and it's actually pretty fun to just get up and go. So the CVT doesn't whine that much. That's one thing a lot of people hate about CVTs is that they're just whiny. This CVT isn't whiny at all. Yes, you have to get used to the engine not shifting gears. I mean, not rowing through gears. You have to get rid of the lack of RPM change that you would get with a conventional automatic transmission as the transmission shifts gears. But you have a select shift um, automatic as well where you can actually row through potential like fake gears on the CVT. They have predefined ratios that you can go through and it works pretty well overall. Except for with a Corolla, I wouldn't bother using it. If you get the S model, you can actually get paddle shifters mounted behind the steering wheel. But I mean, in an LE, you're not gonna get that. And quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it. So this powertrain, combined provides 32 mpg. Now that's really good, especially after the EPA changed its ratings, which caused a lot of cars to lose some mileage. Still getting 32 mpg overall, 28 city, 36 highway is a pretty good feat. And just overall, this whole powertrain is quiet, it's refined, and it's smooth. It's a very smooth powertrain. So let's talk a little bit about the driving experience. The old Corolla, Previous generation Corollas just didn't drive that great. They were kind of clumsy in corners. There wasn't a lot of steering feedback and that didn't really bother anyone because it was a Corolla and no one was interested in getting a Corolla to have a sporty driving experience. However, this new Corolla, Toyota's tried to change that. They've tried to make it a bit more sporty and maybe give it a bit more panache, a bit more excitement. So what they did was they provided some selective modes that you can go through. Now you don't get those on the LE. If you get an S model, you have a sport mode that changes throttle response and stiffens up the steering and whatnot. But on the LE, you don't get any of that. But still the steering, it's okay. Like it's electric power steering. It's very mushy on center. But once you start to go into a corner, it tightens up a bit. But what really surprised me is that the chassis of this car, like the whole chassis um, suspension and whatnot, works really well going around corners. You have a good amount of grip and it corners really flat. 
Now, what's a shame is that they didn't calibrate the steering to be quick and responsive enough to really make the most of that chassis setup, which is kind of a shame. They could have done a whole lot more with the steering system on this car, and this car would have been a real ball in the corners. It's completely adequate in the corners now, but they could have just done so much more with it. But is that going to bother anyone that's buying this car? No. Trust me. If you're buying this car, you're not going to worry about it. The steering works great. It's easy to use. So I wouldn't worry about it unless you're trying to like go really quick around some corners and take this car to the limit, which most people aren't going to do. So let's move on to the interior of this car. So the interior, I think it's one of the best looking interiors in the segment. It feels huge in here. It may be a small car, but it's so airy. You have tons of glass space and it just feels really big inside. And the dashboard is set pretty far back from you, so it actually gives this illusion of feeling bigger than it actually is. And what I like is that it's this dual tone dashboard. You have a black top with like this grayish um, soft touch material in the middle. And I just think it looks really modern. It looks, some, looks like something that you would find like in your new apartment, whatever. It looks like a new kind of appliance. It's just modern technology is getting incorporated into this car and it looks really, really cool. So you have these really nice air vents that are actually molded out of the dashboard material and they flow really well and they look really new. It has this chrome little adjuster on it and it matches the whole piano black accent along the dash. And another thing that they changed is they put in these really cool circular um, vents on either corner of the dashboard and they have like 360 degrees of adjustment. It's crazy, you can open and close them to like whatever degree you want, you can turn them whatever way you want. And it's really, really nice because you can basically direct the air wherever you want to direct it. And I think they look cool too. It's kind of what you get in the Scion IM. It's effectively that, that dashboard. And the other thing I want to mention are the seats. So the LE has your classic cloth seats. They're basically gray and they're pretty comfortable. I was surprised. They're not electrically adjustable. You don't have any lumbar support adjustment but there's actually a fair amount of cushion support. The bottom cushion extends pretty far. I can go for a little more thigh support, but I'm particularly tall, so most people aren't gonna have that issue. And the cushions themselves are pretty supple, and I get a good amount of support. I was surprised. A lot of the time, the base model cushions aren't all that great, but these are actually pretty good. And the rear seat room in this car is really impressive. I'm six foot two, as I mentioned many, many times and I can actually fit behind myself. Headroom's a little bit tight, but knee room and foot room behind the front seat, it's really, really good, and people are gonna be impressed. You'll be able to actually haul five people in this car. It's not just a selling point. You can actually do it, which is really nice. And the interior itself, it's hushed. The ride, it rides like a much bigger car. It's very smooth. It feels tied down. It's not floaty, but impacts don't really interrupt the ride, and you don't get shaken around. Now, wind and road noise are very reduced. There is almost no wind noise and road noise is hushed as well. There's a little bit of tire roar, but hardly anything that you'd ever notice. And I really like that because a lot of small cars, they can feel tinny, they can feel loud, and this car just doesn't feel that way. It feels a lot more grown up, a lot better designed than some of the competitors. So let's talk technology, and I think that's where this Corolla LE is gonna come into its own. You have a 6.1 inch, Entune display on an LE Corolla. And what they did was they made the whole display one solid piece of glass. There's no uh, separate buttons. All the buttons on it are just haptic feedback touch buttons with this really nice blue surround on them. And it works really well. The graphics are a million times better than they are in some of the other Entune systems. I think it's a new uh, edition of Entune that they just implemented here. And I really like how the one solid piece of glass makes it look really crisp, really modern and the feedback is quick, it's easy to use, and I really, really like it overall. It just matches the dashboard so well. I'm very impressed. And the other thing I really like is that it has a six speaker audio system, which sounds really, really good. I was just blown away when I first turned on the radio. I was like, man, this is a base model car and it sounds that good? That's just ridiculous. But that's how it works. And there's also a lot of other really nice features that I didn't expect to see in this car, including lane departure warning. It's just like, who gets lane departure warning in a $21,000 car? It's insane. You have this little display in between the gauges, and it'll actually have like a little model of your car, and it'll show it moving out of the lane if you're moving out of lane. It actually has a little bit of active steering assist in there as well, which is nice. 
And another thing I just love about this interior is the clock. It sits right in the middle of the dashboard and it just looks super modern. And it's basically like a little accent piece to top off this really nice interior. And all the controls, super modern looking, super easy to use. I really like how they all have this piano black finish with these nice chrome accents. And I just think it rocks. This whole interior is super modern, especially when you look at other competitors like the Chevy Sonic, and the Hyundai Elantra, they just look cheaper inside. They aren't this luxurious feeling and this crisp and modern looking. It doesn't have the frameless mirror. I wish it had that. That would just make it really nice inside, but maybe they'll implement it in the future. We'll have to see. So let's talk a little bit about the personality of the Corolla. So the Corolla is basically like a mini Camry, except for I feel like it just is a little bit sportier than most Toyota products. I feel like it combines a little bit of sportiness with a little bit of more refinement than you would expect from a car in this segment. Now, granted this isn't a full-blown sports car, but just driving around in this car, it feels fun and nimble even if you're not pushing it that hard. It's not the best driving car in this segment, but for most people it's going to do a great job. And I just love how refined it is. I'm driving this car and it don't feel like I'm driving a penalty box. I feel like I'm driving a car that is quality and is well built and is good value. That's one thing I just can't express enough. This car is just really, really good value. And I feel like the Corolla just wants to have a little bit of fun. It feels like Toyota finally managed to inject a little bit of personality into the Corolla. Now, if you watched my Camry review a few weeks ago, you would note that I didn't really feel like the Camry had any personality. It didn't really touch me in any way. Now, if you're not a car guy, you're probably not going to get that. But if you're a car guy, you know how cars can like get under your skin and you can really start to like them. Well, I just really like this car. It kind of, it feels innocent. It feels like it's just trying to be the best car it can for you. And it does such a good job of that. It just combines a nice ride, good fuel economy, practicality, interior features and sophistication and it's a little bit of fun to drive and I just really love it. So on that note, I'm going to just sign off my time with the Corolla. Before I go, I'm definitely going to thank Orisman Chantilly Toyota for lending us this 2017 Corolla. Really appreciate it. Those guys have been awesome. They've definitely lent me a lot of cars and I hope to borrow more from them in the future. If you guys are interested, in checking out a Corolla or any Toyota product, you should definitely go check them out. They are some great guys and they'll cut you a great deal. So as always, feel free to like, share, definitely subscribe. We need to up our subscribers and please check out MotormindsProductions.com. It's a great website, little bio about me and Jack, and there's a link to our YouTube channel. So if you can't find us on YouTube, just go straight to the website. You'll find us there. Ooh, Rolls Royce. Not every day you see one of those, but yeah. So Check out our next video and hopefully you will enjoy it. Thanks again for watching.